Welcome back. Striving to help immigrant families in NYC, organization Bronx Works offers services meant to meet the needs of this vulnerable population. Assisting this community is just one part of Bronx Works effort to help individuals and families improve their economic and social well-being. Joining me to discuss their efforts to support immigrant families is Director of Legal Services, Arturo Lopez. Arturo, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, can you talk a little bit more about your overall, you know, mission with Bronx Works? Sure. So Bronx Works is a non-for-profit. It's been in the Bronx for over 40 years, providing a variety of services. I am in the, in the legal department and we provide uh, legal representation for free to the community. Um, one of our one of the largest services we provide to the community is our immigration services. As you know, the Bronx is a very immigrant heavy uh, community and we can assist with immigration applications, uh, general consultations, information and and other uh, issues like that that the community may be facing. Now working with so many different types of families, you know what are some of the unique cha challenges that face uh, families who are dealing with immigration? Mm -hmm. I would say the just the complexity of the the process and the system, um, it's very hard to understand. Um, there's a lot of need. And so uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And so people sometimes don't necessarily understand it, uh, the process, what needs to be done, um, and can sometimes be taken advantage of by uh, people who are not licensed to practice law and hold themselves out as um, as knowledgeable and authorized to assist with the immigration process. And that's why I always advise people to to seek out uh, nonprofits that can provide free, legitimate representation, high quality representation to these families. Now, now that you mentioned that, what yeah. is something or what are some things that, you know, people who are looking for this help should look for just to make sure that the people that they're getting help from are legit um, and are not trying to, like you mentioned, feed them misinformation? Right. Well, first, uh, they should be looking for uh, an actual attorney and not a notario or accounting service. Um, and again, if the charges uh, for the services or extremely high, or if they actually even over make this process uh, seem oversimplified, it's just a simple thing. It's not going to cause much, cost much. They may not be properly explaining the process. They may not be competent. They may just be looking to sort of uh, reel you in, uh, and then after there's a problem, start to charge more and take advantage of the person. Now, can you explain? I, I'm not sure. Uh, if I'm like overestimating yeah. or underestimating, but you know, uh, can you just explain what the general process is like? So is it something that you do online? Do you get like a piece of paper? Like how does that work and what does that process look like? Sure. So there, there are a lot of different applications and forms and processes. It, it all really depends on what you want to do. So, um, you know, when that question is uh, sort of hard to answer in the sense that um, any any particular process or anything in, you want to do is going to have its own process. So, but in in the in a very general sense, um, the forms are available for free online. Uh, there should be no charge just to provide you the forms. Uh, the applications are prepared. The supporting evidence is collected, and everything is packaged and sent to USCIS. Now. It, we will assist with all those aspects and all those services are free. Um, and then uh, the application would be sent to USCIS. And, and so again, we can help you for free with those, that process of processes, whichever one is you need help with. Now, I understand that your organization mm -hmm. also assists with the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, mm -hmm. also known as DACA mm -hmm. applications. You know, can you explain what that is and what those applications sure. help with? Sure. So those are, that's one of the many applications we assist with. And that process was one that started for individuals that arrived uh, as children to the United States um, who had been uh, arrived in the U.S. before the age of, of 16 and had been here for uh, a certain number of years before the, the process was first started. It's still ongoing. 
And if you qualify, you can receive um, work authorization to remain and work in the United States. Now, I think it's so important that, uh, you know, there's a focus on children as mm -hmm. well as adults and just families in general. Can you just explain why it was important for the organization to focus on so many different uh, aspects or, you know, just areas of this vulnerable population? Sure. I mean, as I said, the, the Bronx community has a very um, high number of immigrants and the vast majority of those are families. So there, you can have one family um, and all the members of the family may have different needs or qualify for different processes. And so it's important to, to be able to provide services to each one individually, understand the process, understand the law, understand what needs to be done, explain it to the client, their, their individual case how what law applies to them individually and help them through that process and and thank you so much for sharing that because i think that sometimes we like just the way it's presented in mainstream mm -hmm. media you think of it as just like one unit and mm -hmm. like one mm -hmm. you know yeah. one application is going to fit for everybody but that's not the reality so i appreciate you you know just mm -hmm. talking about that mm -hmm. now can you talk about the um the efforts like the english for speakers of other languages classes and what those are so sure, BronxWorks also has um, a, a ESL program uh, that's open to the community um, and it helps uh, the students learn English, be more competent in English. And this in turn can also help them with uh, not only their careers, but also in relation to immigration. If they are applying for citizenship, it can help them with that process because they're in it, there is an English uh, competency requirement uh, to the process, a test, um, which applicants do have to take. Now, I want to mm -hmm. mention uh, that last year, you know, our city saw an increase of migrants from Venezuela mm -hmm. seeking shelter and asylum. Can you just talk about some of the ways that your organization was able to assist, mm -hmm. you know, this community? Sure. So um, just as with anyone else, if you contact our office, and schedule an appointment. We are happy to meet with you and provide information on immigration in general, analyze your case and determine what you may or may not qualify for and explain the process and the laws that apply to you. So in general, uh, our doors were open to these uh, new arrivals as well. And in addition, we worked with a lot of other Bronx Works programs that were working to provide services to these families that arrived uh, our shelter programs, our, our uh, meals programs to try to provide uh, holistic assistance to these these new arrivals. Now, I also want to mention, since working so closely with this community recently, you know, the mayor is looking to house migrants in 20 standalone school gyms. As I mentioned, working closely mm -hmm. with this community, you know, can you just tell me your thoughts on that? Is this the best mm -hmm. uh, process for this community? Is this what they need? Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Right. So. The, the majority of people coming to New York that I've encountered uh, and definitely my general knowledge are families, families with young children. Um, and I think we need to, to really look at that and try to put forth an effort to assist and house in a humane manner, uh, you know, housing in a sort of a large room kind of structure may not necessarily be the best for these families. Uh, so I, I really think we need to try to find, uh, you know, just just better solutions to help these, these families. Now, for anybody who feels exactly how you do, you know, mm -hmm. what are some ways that they can support Bronx Works Mission to, you know, just help and assist these vulnerable mm -hmm. communities? I mean, we are a nonprofit. If anyone um, would like to donate to, the, to our organization, they can feel free to do so. Uh, if you'd like to help more hands-on, we do have um, uh, volunteer applications that you can prepare on our website so people can feel free to, to volunteer on those. In my um, my department, obviously, is the legal department, so it's, it's made up of attorneys. So if there are any experienced attorneys out there who are seeking to donate some of their time and expertise in the legal field, they, they would be welcome to do so as well. And can you also talk about uh, the Bronx Works Emergency Fund and what that's mm -hmm. all about? 
um, uh, the, there was a fund set up to to assist um, the community um, on these emergency if emergencies do arise. And so again, that's information that would be on our website, and you can seek information about that program and the uh, the application process. I wouldn't oversee the applications, uh, but um, you know, I know we have very competent staff who's always dedicated to helping the community. So if if uh, they receive your application, I know that they will look at it very closely. Now, I want to mm -hmm. take a moment, uh, we have a little bit of time left, just to talk about some mm -hmm. of the other work Bronx Works does. Can you just uh, give, us, give us an overview sure. of some of the other work you do? Sure. So um, in addition to our immigration program, we do have some other legal programs that are uh, closely linked to immigration, we find that there's a lot of open, overlap in the need in the community. We do have a, a crime victims program, which assists individuals who have been the victim of a crime, uh, can assist with the legal issues arising out of that. Attorneys can help. Um, some of the most common things we help with are orders of protection, issues with identity theft, um, or benefits issues that may arise in connection usually to the identity theft, uh, tax issues that are related to identity theft. So uh, a lot, any, anything where a person was the victim of a crime. And then we also have a program which specializes in working with domestic violence survivors, um, you know, which is a crime in itself, right. but it specializes in that. And, and we find that many of our clients are immigrants and are often, um, scared to report because of their status or lack of status. And so the our programs can all work together to provide services and analyze the case as a whole from the need uh, that may arise from the criminal victimization or the domestic violence to can also I, analyzing the immigration need. Can you just let everybody know really quickly mm -hmm. where they can go to utilize these resources? Sure. Our, our website is basically the, the best place to start. Uh, bronxworks.org and you'll find all of the agency's programs listed on there but you'll see a tab for the legal services and you can find all the legal services listed on there. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Great thank you very much for having me. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you the viewers for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show you can catch the Recable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum channel 67 and Verizon Fios channel 33 or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. I'm Kevin Aline wishing you and your safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.